no, ChatGPT will not take your job. And if anything, my job as a teacher is more at risk because of what ChatGPT can do. In this video, I wanna talk about what it can do, how you can actually use this as a developer to get better and write better code, and why it's impossible for this tool to take your job. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And today I wanna to talk a lot about ChatGPT. I think this is a really cool AI program and it has a lot of potential, but none of that potential has anything to do with replacing your job. And I went through, I've been using it for a little while, kind of trying out different prompts, seeing what it can do. And what I've really noticed about ChatGPT is that it's really geared towards giving you answers to questions. And that's essentially the reason that this tool was built. You can even read down here, it's in free research preview, and that ChatGPT was optimized for dialogue. It's optimized for you talking to someone, like a chatbot essentially, but like a really, really good chatbot that can answer almost any question you throw at it. It's not optimized for creating or writing code, and you can definitely tell when you start asking it really code-based questions, because it gets things wrong, or it gets things incorrect, or it's just not how you would do it. It's just not optimized for that. It can do it, but it's not what it's meant to do. For this reason and this reason alone, this is not going to ever replace your job as is, but it could be built upon to be more geared towards code, and in that case, it could really help you with your job, but I still don't think it'll replace your job because of other reasons we're gonna talk about in this video. Now, when it comes to asking ChatGPT questions, I'm really happy with the responses they give me. For example, I asked what is Next.js 13, and it told me really briefly what Next is and some of the differences that version 13 comes with. And overall, it's really good at answering these kinds of simple questions, even coding related ones. Like I asked it to give me a simple Next.js and Firebase integration, and it wrote out not only explanations of what is going on, but the different commands I need, like installing Firebase, setting up a config fire file for Firebase, and then initializing it and how you can reference it. Now this doesn't actually really talk anything about how to integrate it with Next.js. This is really just how I can do this with Firebase. It's just saying once it's installed, you can import it into Next.js, but nothing else about how to specifically use it in Next.js. So it's not perfect and that's okay. You can continue to refine your question, maybe ask it some more points. I could have followed this up by saying, hey, give me more information on how to actually implement this in Next.js and it would have given me more information back. But as just an initial response, this is pretty good and is helpful with certain things. And it's also really good for just asking generic questions. I thought this one was pretty funny. I figured I'd ask it who I am to see if it would be able to tell. And it was pretty accurate for almost everything except for it thought that Travis Nielsen runs my YouTube channel, which would be hilarious because he has great content, but obviously that's not true. And something else that I really think this is good for is when it comes to writing things. So I asked it to write me a blog article in Markdown on the three most popular HTTP status codes. I actually have a blog article talking about much more than three, but I have a ton of HTTP status codes on my most recent blog article. I'll link in the description for you. But this actual blog article it wrote, which I told it to do in Markdown, which it did use Markdown for, is actually fairly, you know, good. It has, you know, a title here, it has some basic explanations, it has the top three things, and it has explanations of what each of those three things do. Now I would go ahead and make this a better blog article if I wrote it from scratch, but this took ChatGPT like 45 seconds to write and it would take me much longer to write. So this is a good place for like starting out with certain things like, hey, write me a blog article on this and then I can take that blog article and modify it and actually make it useful for my audience and more correct and you know more detailed than what they give you here. Now one thing I did notice, we can actually see my next example of why this thing I noticed is I said write CSS code to create a simple parallax effect. And I noticed that a lot of answers that this gives you back have a lot of repeated information or they're very like, you can kind of tell it's an AI pulling information from things because it tells you a lot of stuff you don't really need to know. Like it's like to create a parallax effect, use background attachment and background position. Here's an example of how to do that. And then it would like explain to you what the background attachment property is in like more detail. And like it would repeat a lot of things in that way, especially some of the other previous examples I tried with this. And you know, it has more details down here. So it's really good at being super detailed but a lot of this stuff is kind of repetitive and you don't really need to know. It's like, oh, you can use background image to put an image as your background. Like that's pretty self-explanatory. I don't need explanation for that. So I found that a lot of things were like that where you could clearly tell it's like, oh, let's just copy paste this from this part of the web, copy paste this from this part of the web and so on. Now, when I did end up giving it some code things like, hey, write a TypeScript type for this very simple JSON object, it was able to do it perfectly fine. Like, here we go, it used an interface instead of a type, no big deal, but it was able to get the number and the string correct for all of my different keys. And it even showed me how I could actually use this if I wanted to. I mean, sure, that's great. It's not what I asked, but it works. And this right here is where I really think it excels. I was like, you know what? The use ID hook is kind of confusing. The React docs aren't good enough for me. What does this do? So I'm asking, hey, when should I use this hook? I don't know why. I kind of know what it does, but I don't know when I should use it. This gave me a really good explanation of kind of what the hook does, 
why I should use the hook, and it even gave me an example of using it in the specific use case that it mentioned. So I think this type of questioning where I'm like, hey, I'm confused on this programming topic, what should I do? Like half the questions you would ask to Stack Overflow are questions you could ask to ChatGPT, and it would give you a response that's just as good as what you're gonna get from Stack Overflow. So this is where I think this really excels in the learning process, or if you're just stuck with something, asking questions like this, it's gonna give you really good detailed explanations of everything. And these explanations have made a lot of sense to me. I read through it and it's pretty much exactly what I would tell someone. Another thing that I've actually heard people have had reported success doing is pasting in like error messages into Chappy GPT and being like, hey, what is causing the problem with this error? And maybe even putting their code in there too and it'll be able to figure out what that problem is as long as it's fairly common. Obviously, if it's super niche, no one's gonna know, but if you have a fairly common problem, like maybe you made a typo in something or you just have something fairly common in your code that's wrong, it might actually be able to fix that for you, but it's gonna be pretty hit or miss. Now, another thing that I found interesting is I was trying to ask it, what does this function do? I just took a function from a project I recently did for a video, pasted it in here. All this function really does is just take one variable of data, these two variables right here, and convert them into a different object. It just transforms the data into a new format. So I took this, I pasted it in, and I said, what does it do? And this explanation was honestly pretty much entirely useless. It was just like, hey, this function takes in an input, and then it returns an output. I mean, that's really all it told me. And it also said it used variables from the input to give me the output. I mean, it wasn't that useful of an explanation, but also it's a pretty simple function, so it's not too big of a deal. I also took some more code down here and kind of asked what this did. And again, it's a very similar thing. It just explained line by line kind of what the code did. It was like, here it did a loop. Here it added things by using the set function. So it was very rudimentary, if that makes sense. Like it wasn't too useful. Like it didn't give me overall like, what is the actual meaning behind this code, which is what I was really hoping to be able to see because sometimes when you get complicated code bases, you may know what every line of the code does, but you don't know what all the code together is really trying to accomplish. I was hoping this might be able to help with that problem, but it looks like it's not quite there, which makes sense because it's a fairly complex thing to explain and it probably wasn't trained on a lot of code examples. Now, some of the final stuff I did was asking it to create functions for me. So I asked it to create a function that takes in three numbers, essentially three coordinates, and converts them to a normalized 3D vector. And it was able to do that perfectly fine using TypeScript. This makes sense. It could do this. This is a very simple function to write. I mean, it's four lines of code here, essentially. So it was able to do this no problem, which I think is really good. So if you have really simple problems that you need solved that are just kind of a pain to write, this is a tool that when it's converted into a more coder-friendly way, could be really useful for doing things like this. But as soon as you ask it to do more complex tasks, like I tried to ask it earlier to create a to-do list application for me using TypeScript and React, and the code was coming along really well. It looked like it was giving me really good code, but I noticed immediately multiple bugs within the code. For example, what it was using as the unique ID to represent each to-do was the index of that element inside the list. So for example, if you added an element to the list, it would give you an ID of zero because it's the first element in the list and so on. Then when you needed to remove elements, it would just remove them at the index of your ID. So if my element had an ID of five, I would pass five to my remove function and remove the element at the index of five. But now my array has changed its length, though all the indexes are no longer correct. So now when I go to remove another element, for example, at index six, it's currently going to remove the seventh element instead of the sixth element. So this is a big problem that you know I saw in the code and it's a problem that a lot of people may not realize when they're just copy pasting the code. So it's all right for these smaller things, but as soon as you get to more complex code, even as something as simple as a to-do list, I found it really started to break down. It just wasn't that functional. Now, the main reason for these shortcomings is you have to realize how these actual AI programs are created and how they work. They're pretty much all created by being fed a ton of data, and then that data is processed, and they're looking for patterns and things inside the data, and then based on answers or questions that you give it, whatever you ask it, it's going to try to take all of its data that it's calculated and figure out, okay, what's the best thing I can give you in to respond to that question? So, you know, if it's looked at 100 different to-do list applications and I ask it to create a to-do list for me, it's going to take all those to-do lists that it's looked at and it's going to try to create one based on the input that I gave it since... I said TypeScript and React, it tried to find some TypeScript React related stuff for me. Now, obviously that's a very simplified version of how this AI works, but the key is the AI is only as smart as the data that you trained it on. So in this case, this you know, application, this AI is not really meant for coding related stuff. It's meant for like a chat application. That's why they called it chat GPT and not code GPT, for example. So it's not gonna be amazing at doing coding related tasks for you. That's why I found it was much better at like creating blog articles or answering questions for me than it was at writing code for me. 
That right there means that it's impossible for this specific program to take over your job because it's not meant for that. But what if someone did do that? They created their own code GPT where they specifically trained it on coding and they wanted it to be as good as possible at doing coding for you, kind of like GitHub Copilot is doing. Well, this again is still not going to replace your job because again, you can only train it on the data you give it. And generally when you're working on large projects, all of the code is private. If you're working in a company, all their code is going to be private. That means the larger, more popular, and bigger code bases out there for these large companies, all of those are going to be private. So the data you have to train these programs is mostly going to be coming from open source software, which some of it is quite large, but a lot of it is going to be smaller projects, projects that people have created for like side projects, side hobbies, and there's not going to be nearly as many large scale enterprise code bases inside of your training data. And that means when you try to use this tool on an enterprise code base, it's not going to be able to pick up on all the things that you're doing. A lot of things that are done on enterprise are not done in smaller applications and same thing vice versa. Smaller applications do a lot of things that you don't do in a large enter enterprise scale. So that right there is another hurdle of these types of AI programs taking over your job. But let's assume that wasn't a problem. We had infinite amount of code to feed this thing as data and it was all different spectrums of quality and data levels and scale level. So it was pretty much as good as you could possibly be at writing code. Well, that's great. But what happens when we need to actually write this AI and actually change this AI and make updates to this AI? You need developers to do that. It's not going to be able to update itself. We're not quite at Skynet, you know, there's no Terminators running around. So we need some way to write the code that's going to write these AIs. And that's where developers come in. So maybe 10, 15 years down the road, these AIs are going to be powerful enough to write out really simple web applications for us. And that might replace quite a few web developer related jobs. That also means we've opened up a ton of other jobs for writing more complex code, like more complex web apps that these AIs can't do, and for writing out the code for these AIs as well. So if we even do replace some jobs, we're going to be opening up other jobs all within the same developer kind of space. Obviously, it's a different skill set, but you're still having that developer job. And again, I don't think these tools will ever get to the point, at least in my lifetime, where they can overtake writing out large scale enterprise applications. I mean, if we get AIs that can write out Facebook, you know, level code or Google level code for us, that's a whole different problem. Like we don't even need developers at that point if we have that level of AI skill and it's going to replace so much more than just a developer job. The key takeaway here is this tool is amazing at answering questions for you and doing things like writing out simple blog articles, but it's not there when it comes to code. And even if someone writes a tool like this for code, such as GitHub Copilot, it's going to be used as a tool by developers to make writing code quicker and easier and not something that takes over your job. Now, if you think this is cool and you want to build out your own AI machine learning project, I have a full video covering how to do that. It's going to be linked right over here. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.